Hi everybody, Tracy Brown here. So I just want to jump right in to the topic of weight and what happens in recovery, what happens in making peace with food in general when you are on this intuitive eating journey. So I'm hoping this video is something that you feel brings you many tips, many tools, some reassurance, and just to know that like, you're probably going to have moments of freak out, meaning, oh my gosh, what's happening with my body, especially if you're not weighing yourself. So let's just start with that first. I highly recommend wherever you are in this journey that you're not weighing yourself. And there's a couple caveats to that. I recommend that we don't weigh ourselves. Um, I don't weigh myself. I have a vague idea, but um, it's not a practice. And I left that practice behind 15 years ago of regularly knowing my weight. Um, and I would just want to let you know, medically, there aren't good reasons for it. It's just a habit of the medical establishment that they take weights, um, mostly, you know, for insurance companies to make very arbitrary decisions about how much they can re reimburse. Um, so that's pretty sucky in itself, but that's a whole other topic. But there's a few reasons for um, knowing your weight from a medical perspective, and there's a few medications that need that, but unless they tell you that ahead of time, you can refuse being weighed. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can always get um, blind weights, meaning turn around and ask both the nursing staff and the doctor, please don't tell me it, even though it's on a piece of paper on your charts, don't tell me it. Please don't let it be on the receipt as I leave. Can you wipe it out, whatever. I know that, that means advocate, advocating for yourself, but it's gonna be really important because it's just habitual. The nurses, that's part of what they're expected to do. The, um, when you go to pay your bill or your copay or whatever you do at the very end, that's just what's on the form and they don't even think twice about it. So you'll have to ask, like, please, can you put a sticky note over that, white it out? Nurses, please don't tell me. Uh, again, better yet, if you can advocate from the very beginning, I don't want to know. Um, not I want to know, but I don't want to be weighed and stick with that. You can do that. Um, you can also, before you go, even go to the appointment, make a call ahead and say, um, especially if it's a, you're looking for a new physician group or individual doctors that I don't want to be weighed and if that's something that you all insist on I'll just keep shopping on and and hold firm to that because that will bring you a lot of um, reassurance and safety that you are getting listened to so that all being put out there um, you know because I'm a um, practitioner I do weigh some of my clients but it's always blind unless um, they're at the place where they can't and aren't ready to let go of that practice. And then we work on slowly backing that down to none. Um, but I do understand that um, that's another symptom of um, some struggle. And so that's just processed, basically. So again, I highly recommend in this process, don't weigh yourself, get rid of your scale. Um, if you're in a household where other people use that scale talk about how important it is that you not have access to it if they won't allow it to be thrown away but if they will great we'll celebrate that which will be great um, but if you can avoid it do so and not because it this number's bad it's just because we need some space in this newer journey to learn how to be more focused on internal cues versus some number deciding how much you should eat or when you should eat or what you should eat um, super important to learn how to be inner guided and directed. So that being said, it's pr pretty inevitable that if you change your food, there are going to be some shifts, not necessarily in your weight, but it could be in your weight. Some people, when they come off chronic dieting, they do have, I mean, a weight gain rebound. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be a lot or that it's going to go on forever, but imagine you are refeeding a starving body. Even if you're not emaciated, there's malnourishment going on. So your body has to restore nourishment, and that can take, that can take a year um, for our bodies to get to a place where it's not constantly like, gimme, 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 or anytime you get hungry, there's a little low-level sense or a high-level sense of panic. And that's another reason not to weigh yourself. Just because you're hungrier doesn't mean that you're overeating or that you're eating too much. On the flip side, if you're struggling with, um, you know, being more grounded around stopping at comfortable fullness or, or still having some moments of binging or some 
mouth hunger or emotional eating, um, you know, know that your body will stabilize out, but give it some time. And in the meantime, you know, you, most of you have heard it's going to be super important to wear clothes that fit. Don't wear clothes that are uncomfortable. I have clients that like, you know, I just don't feel good in wearing shorts or, or whatever kind of clothes that like fit too tight around my legs or my, my rear end or my, my belly. And I say, well, wear looser things for now. Wear more dresses and wear whatever feels um, that on a day-to-day basis you're feeling just more comfortable in general. It's very important. Uh, we overlook that very small gesture, but it means a lot. So the only time that I have people weigh themselves are usually with me, if possible, or if we are virtual, I will do that together virtually with them, is maybe at the end of the journey. Um, I have people that fall in two camps. Some people who are like, I never need to know. I could care less. I genuinely don't need to know. And then some people say, you know what? I just kind of want to know so that it can be so neutral that if I happen to see it for whatever silly reason on a piece of paper or whatever, that I don't feel much charge about that or any at all. And so both of those are highly, I think, great options. There's not a bad way to do it. It's just more about some people want to know. So it just feels like, oh, it's like the sky is blue, just a piece of information. And you do it. Some people don't feel like they need that and they feel very settled and empowered in where they're at. So either way is fine. But I do suggest if you're going to do it, it would be really good to have um, some time to process that with your support person or people, your professional, um, whatever, to be able to um, feel really, really um, genuine, like it's a full circle moment of I'm good. So, but for now, until you get to those places of not needing to know and not caring or wanting to know so you don't care, um, in the meantime, don't weigh yourself. And if you're not a, a, a scale wearer, I know there's other ways we monitor ourselves, which is clothes size, or belts, or all kinds of little tricky ways. We've done that body checking. See if you can work towards slowly decreasing that. And when you want to, being curious, huh, I wonder what's going on for me, and can I be with this feeling? And start from that place. So I hope this video was helpful around this whole weighing, I don't want to use the word issue, but you know, concern, what's happening. It's a lot of freedom to be able to let go of knowing the number. And I hope all those little tools that, or those circumstances that we talked about, you can use those tools to be able to navigate those circumstances um, a lot easier. So until next time, thanks so much and take care. Bye.